This story will cover from then to now and next, all about change, how to turn losers into winners. From Mexico, the little Kemp's Ridley sea turtle, endangered. In Costa Rica, a bit bigger, the olive Ridley, sometimes coming ashore in thousands to lay their eggs on some of the most beautiful beaches in the world. Costa Rica means rich coast, and it is. In Kenya, returning green and hawksbill turtles to the sea. And in the Mediterranean, such as Greece and Turkey, the loggerhead, Coretta Coretta. And in the USA, the biggest of all the sea turtles, the mighty leatherback. They are all truly dinosaurs from the past. But what of the future? Will these mating green turtles ensure more generations in a changing world, especially in the oceans and along the shorelines they depend on? The world of turtles overlaps with the world of humans, sometimes disastrously. Large international hotel chains, run by powerful people far away, can wreck the coast that attracts both their paying customers and the wildlife that pays a different kind of price. And it could be those ancient species, the pelicans or turtles, both sharing that most ancient of environments, the world's oceans. This is Playa Grande, the big beach on the Pacific coast of Costa Rica in Central America. It's a typical battleground between ancient and modern, people in collision with wildlife. Offshore, a female leatherback turtle waits for nightfall. Onshore, but still underwater, this symbol of the deep decorates the local hotel swimming pool, which no doubt benefits from the Leatherback's majestic reputation. Up the road, the locals live more modestly, but you'll find Leatherbacks here too. Whether it's in the bar or next to the snooker table, People have seen changes here as more and more visitors come here for the beach. Iguanas have seen it all before, but unlike the turtles, they've been able to adjust to tourism pretty well. This surfer from the US is on the tracks of another beach visitor, unexpectedly, during the day. For some reason, a lone olive ridley turtle has come ashore in the very hot sun to lay her eggs. She attracts the international audience. Turtles fascinate people all over the world, from Costa Rica to Cuba, China to Cameroon, Colombia to the Cayman Islands. People care about them, like in this case, providing shade. But some of those same visitors from far away may innocently be disrupting the lives of the creatures they like so much. That seems to be the price of tourism in many countries where turtles survive today, but just. Today she came, she laid and she won, returning safely to the sea. More safety at an important project at Playa Grande. As well as olive ridleys, leatherbacks favor this beach and their offspring are taken care of by teams of Earthwatch volunteers in a hatchery where tourists can see the process in action.
This project in Costa Rica has shown that the adult leatherbacks travel far and wide, swimming south to Ecuador and Galapagos on the equator. As numbers of returning adults decreases, it seems fishing and entanglement in nets and ropes is probably the reason. Again, an international problem. So, can turtles and people mix? Well, yes, maybe, with worldwide help. At night, the Earthwatch volunteers, who come from many countries, check carefully on their hatchlings about to be released. Red light is used so as not to distract them. Lights they can see, as in many tourist places, may cause them to set off inland and die in the process. Earthwatch volunteers may be young or old and come from a variety of skills, guided by a scientist. So a carpenter may help build a hatchery, a nurse will look after the team's health and this is a tough job, not being a tourist on a lovely sunny beach, but slogging through soft sand at night with mosquitoes and sleeping it all off in the day when all the tourists are having fun. They say only one in a thousand will survive and then return to this same spot to nest. What we can say is these volunteers are increasing their chances, if only by a bit. In the ocean she's supported by the water, but on shore she's definitely not, and it requires a massive effort to drag herself from the sea to the beach. A very alien environment for her. Nearby, here is a survivor with a track record. Again using light that the adult leatherback does not see, a guide and a scientist show paying tourists what goes on at night on Playa Grande. A satellite transmitter could provide vital evidence that will help this global reptilian tourist. Pelicans fly in, and so do snowbirds. They're people seeking warmth away from their freezing homes in Canada and the US. It says here Mr. Davy will help you, for a price of course. But the cost may be the wild beach itself, and these other visitors that depend on it for their future. This is the first of our challenges, the situation back in 2003 with real pressure on the beach at Playa Grande, Costa Rica. Result to come in part two. Further north, up the same coast, Nicaragua has been developing less, and now is probably the time to put some sort of protection in place for the beaches and thus the turtles that need them. So hold pack the bulldozer that symbol of so-called progress. Another border, another challenge. American turtle scientists are working with Mexicans to help the little Kemp's Ridley turtle, once very common and now very rare, due to their eggs being taken and eaten by humans and adults killed for their meat or caught up in fishing nets. A big international cooperative effort has improved the situation and the Kemp's Ridley is slowly making a comeback with lots of help from its friends. But it could be a major oil spill like BP's massive mistake in the Gulf of Mexico that puts everything back. No wonder BP deserves that huge fine. Most turtle supporters would agree.
So hopefully in that sand so carefully arranged more little Kemp's Ridleys are coming to life having been collected from the beach nearby. They'll then be released into the changing world that we share with them. Up in Florida in the USA, baby loggerhead turtles get a helping hand. The first destination, sargassum weed, in the Gulf Stream of the Atlantic. Further destinations will be revealed, and that great ocean current, plus abundant food, carries them to other continents. Swimming may help a bit on this very long and risky journey. The local fish are probably more interested in this new neighbour than trying to eat it, though many baby turtles are taken by bigger predators, like sharks. And we take sharks for the ridiculous, greedy, unsustainable trade in shark fin soup. China is the main customer, causing fins to be cut off the living shark, then to be dumped to die in a terrible death, unable to swim. The nets and lines catch turtles too, and it's worth remembering that it's our demand for fish that is behind the whole process of feeding ourselves, whether it's tuna or sharks for the ruthless, insatiable Chinese demand. Many fish stocks have been overfished, from toothfish in the Antarctic to bluefin tuna in the Mediterranean. Like whales in the past, human greed extinguished one species after another with no thought for the future. But do these young loggerheads we followed from the Gulf Stream in the USA to here in the Mediterranean, what sort of future do they have? It all depends. Believe it or not, these people are at a serious symposium in 2006 in Crete in Greece, and they are very serious about turtles all over the world. They form a global crusade backed by science, some 800 of them here. In fact, here in the host country, Greece, is a classic turtle conservation test case. There will be more to come, as we will find out later, with Greece's controversial neighbour, Turkey. Can the two countries cooperate over a common concern? We will see. Right now the concern is about a special Greek island called Zakynthos, which shows the local problem with international similarities. This is our second challenge, with the solutions to be shown in part two. underwater world of the conference's interest, a loggerhead turtle awaiting the night. Its destiny in the hands and voices of the people from all over the world concerned about her future and her species and her nesting place. Magic PR words like partnership and sustainable sound good, but what really happens when it comes to that beach every summer when tourists and turtles collide potentially in Albania, still one of the Mediterranean relatively unspoilt coastlines. Posters display to the delegates many research projects with the hope global connections can be made, whether it's a species, a problem or success, from the Galapagos to the Caribbean to Indonesia to changing Cuba even China, that huge consumer of all natural resources, may be able to find room for turtles on an increasingly crowded and built-up coastline. To come this far and speak in a foreign language could be daunting, but he's determined. It's less difficult for an Australian, to whom it's no worry. Africa is represented by Cameroon, Thailand, which was hit by the tsunami, its beach is smashed, but we are told recovered now. 
with the turtles too. Mexico, one of the fastest growing destinations, that's a good tourism word, in the world. Can they mix people and turtles? Turtles and people. And inevitably, the impact of fishing, in this case the always popular tuna, a global favorite. Turtles are often the so-called bycatch, drowned, dead, and dumped. Trinidad, a Scottish student, found one of the largest leatherback nesting sites in the world. Some good news in the state of the world's sea turtles. We will update the situation in 2015 at the annual turtle symposium to be held in Turkey. But in the meantime, back in nearby Greece, the row at Zakynthos and the talking about it continued at that conference in Crete. Apparently Greece has it all, including nesting turtles, but the reality is different, truly a Greek myth. A few beaches still survive tourism, where the only people reaching them are helping the turtles coming ashore in the alleged marine park. But these beaches, apparently protected for turtles, bring big problems with it. Greek and English, visitors are asked for help. But this is what has happened to one end of Laganus Beach, as more planes bring more people from all over Europe to the Med. Turtle tat, some will call it. But it does show turtle appeal too, and perhaps a reason for ensuring their future locally, as money flies in. Turtles can't nest where there are sunbeds at night, and nearby lights disorientate both adults and hatchlings. So this patch of sand will never see a turtle again. Those female turtles waiting offshore may have come back to lay their eggs, but at least she provides a thrill for the tourists and once again proves the appeal of these venerable creatures. In the distance is as yet an undeveloped part of Lagana's beach patrolled by volunteers. Potentially, the building plots sold there could really pay off. You can understand the frustration of would-be developers. Stopped by turtles? Yes, and more rows. This end is how it all once was. 1,300 nests across five and a half kilometers, the most in the Med, and in the far distance, the town and all that goes with it. Behind the beach at the moment, there is a lot of empty ground, but will it stay that way for the turtles? The answer comes from above. Joining the patient pregnant loggerheads offshore are various water sports, some more lethal than others. Accidents happen, of course in this lively, temporary, seasonal society where the fun can be on the sea or on the beach but miles apart in their lifestyles. These may be the only turtles to come ashore in the future if the tide of tourism continues to rise with no restrictions.
Laws about national parks in Greece may exist, but they're not enforced, particularly in a country in such a state of flux. Greece has one of the most beautiful coastlines in the whole of Europe, attracting people from all walks of life. If development rushes ahead, everyone will suffer, except perhaps the developers. Turtles certainly will if their beaches are built on. This turtle, possibly partly blind, benefits from the local fishermen. Others are less fortunate when it comes to lost fishing nets, and especially plastic, which can look like a jellyfish to a leatherback turtle, its main food. In Great Britain in Wales in September 1988, the world's largest leatherback was washed ashore dead. The reason was clear to see. The plastic had blocked its intestine and it had starved to death. Now increasingly, plastic bags connect people all over the world as we litter the ocean. It can be a very useful product, but a killer too, whether it's plastic bags or lost fishing gear so-called ghost nets, which can drift forever, everywhere, enmeshing dead or dying marine life, including turtles. They can end up on the beach next to you until dedicated volunteers clear up the mess. Girakas is one of the protected beaches in the National Marine Park of Zakynthos. If funding allows in these troubled times for Greece, access is controlled. There are border posts and barriers, whilst behind the scenes a so-called pilot management plan is underway on another protected beach, Daphne. A visitor from the Netherlands has turned back. Daphne is where people are trying to get to, but they can't. People from other countries want to see what's going on in Daphne. But a Swiss man sneaked in and recorded evidence of illegal development at the beach, a favorite for turtles. Would he be welcome? It would seem not. But part two reveals a solution to challenge number two. The third challenge involves the behaviour of the big tour companies. One of the most powerful in Europe is TUI, who own First Choice and Thomson's. Tourism is often blamed for bad development along the coast. But is tourism always the bad boy? Are turtle types killjoys, defying progress, holding back jobs and growth? The modern essential, apparently. Here's a perspective back in 2006 when Wolfgang Michael Iwood from the all-powerful, very rich tourist company TUI in Germany addressed the symposium. Some responsibility for this issue at TUI, the first problem and high risk factor I faced was not toxics, natural catastrophes, emissions, climate change, but in fact, marine turtles. On Bali, they were being brutally slaughtered by inhabitants. In Dalian, in Turkey, they stood in the way of the development of Istuzu Beach for tourism. <coughs> On Zakintos, <coughs> locals and environmental activists were involved in shocking running battles. Each of these was an environmental and tourism scandal, especially in the eyes of the media. Tourism is, I think, predestined to be 
the ally of marine turtle conservation, turtles and tourism, a sturdy double T partnership, like a double T beam in construction. If we could model your profound marine ecosystem intelligence into experience applied to tourism, if we could exploit all forms and features of technical IT applications within the global information society, we would have a vision for a global sea turtle conservation and sustainable tourism partnership. I can definitely say on behalf of TUI, and especially here in Greece, on behalf of Krakatoa, we share your objectives and we value your outstanding work around the world. Marine turtle conservation is our common commitment. Diverse cultures, one purpose. As I said, turtles and tourism, double T, something to build on. Thank you for giving me the honor to address you. Well, have to eat delivered as he promised back in 2006. You'll see their response to challenge three in part two later. And finally, challenge four, the famous Istusu beach in Turkey, once threatened by development 27 years ago, but back again in the news in 2015. See the outcome in part two. <laughs>